If you want to know what you really need to take in the backcountry for Northern Tier, then this video is for you. Hey, real quick, right before we jump into this video, if you'd do me a huge favor and hit that like button. Also, thank you for subscribing to this channel. If you'd like to be notified of future videos, please hit that bell icon. Have a great day and enjoy this video. Before we get into this packing list, I just want to let you know, this is my list of things that I brought or would have brought to Northern Tier. At the time of this video, in 2022, this list is compatible with the packing list provided by Northern Tier. I do want to let you know that there are things on this list that are not included on the Northern Tier packing list. And these are things that I think that you should bring to help you have a great experience at Northern Tier. First up, this is the clothing that I wore while on the water in the backcountry. I've got another video that goes into better detail about what each of these items are for, so I won't spend much time on that in this video. So this is just an inventory of what I had. A sun hat to keep the sun off your face. This happens to be the cool sun blade with mesh. You'll need a carabiner for the neck strap of your sun hat. This happens to be the Petzl Spirit. What makes it special is because it doesn't have a notch for your cord to get hung up in. You'll need a sun shirt with a UPF rating. I prefer sun hoodies. This happens to be the Patagonia Tropic Hoodie 2. And I love it because it is awesome day after day after day and extremely comfortable to wear. You'll need long pants to protect your legs from sun, brush, bugs, and ticks. These are the Eddie Bauer Guide Pro Pants. I know these pants are expensive. They do go on sale several times a year. You'll need a very heavy duty sturdy web belt to hold up your water bottle and everything else you clip to it. I do not prefer suspenders because they tend to fall off of your shoulders when paddling. I wore a sock liner to help protect my feet from blisters. These happen to be the Right Sock Cool Mesh 2 in a crew length. For my cushion socks, I chose the Smart Wool Classic Hike Sock. I really enjoyed having these socks. They dried out very fast. They were just the right amount of warmth, but they weren't hot either. For my boots, I chose the Merrill Moab 2 ventilators. These boots drain very fast. They are easy to take on and off. They are very grippy on wet rocks. They can be a problem in deep mud. But I would definitely take them again on my next trip to Northern Tier. For my underwear, I wore the Ex Officio Sport Mesh Boxer Brief in the six inch length. These are extremely comfortable to wear all day for multiple days in and out of the water. For females, ask your female advisor for their suggestions. You'll be in and out of the water all day long and you'll be paddling a lot, which means your arms will be up or down depending on which side of the canoe you're paddling on and your arms and shoulders will be moving all day while you're paddling. I say this for this, almost the same reason I don't suggest suspenders. When I've worn suspenders and paddled, the suspenders want to fall off my shoulders. You do not want to be fighting that all day long. You want to be able to just focus on the task at hand and enjoy your trip. You'll need a pair of polarized sunglasses or prescription sunglasses. You'll need a sunglass retention strap. This happens to be a croquis. It can float or not float. That's your discretion. If you wear prescription eyeglasses, you want to make sure you have a pair of those available to you while in the canoe and paddling. If you do wear prescription eyeglasses, you must have a retention strap for those and they must float and they should be bright colored so you can see them in the lake if they fall off your face. To help prevent you from getting blisters on your hands, I recommend that you bring paddling gloves. These are the NRS Boaters gloves. I do recommend that you bring a cushion for the canoe seat. 
Your seat cannot be able to be strapped into the canoe. Your seat needs to float. The seat can, but does not have to double as your camp chair. An example would be on the left is the Thermarest Z Soul seat, and on the right is a generic foam stadium seat cushion. You will also need to be able to clip this seat onto your belt or life jacket with a carabiner. For your primary water bottle, I'd highly suggest you get a one quart water bottle. This happens to be a Nalgene Lexan wide mouth water bottle. It's very tough, indestructible, and the Lexan does not add any plasticky taste to the water. You'll need to put your water bottle inside the Northern Tier water bottle holster, and you will need to duct tape your water bottle into the holster so it does not slip or fall out. And then you'll need a large carabiner to clip your water bottle holster with the water bottle in it to your life jacket or belt. This next list of items are things that you'll want easy access to throughout the day. A hiking style compass, this happens to be the Silva Explorer Pro. A head bug net, this happens to be the Sea to Summit version because it's extremely small and compact. A travel sized tube of sunscreen, this happens to be one fluid ounces and that's enough for one trip. A small travel sized tube of lip balm or chapstick. A small bottle of bug repellent and note that this is lotion and not an aerosol. You don't ever want to bring any aerosol products into the backcountry. If you wear contacts, you'll want easy access to rewetting drops. A small personal roll of toilet paper. A small travel sized portion of hand sanitizer. A quart size freezer Ziploc bag to put both the toilet paper and hand sanitizer in. For females, if you need anything to assist in going to the bathroom in the backcountry, make sure you bring it. A small multi-tool, this happens to be the Leatherman Squirt PS4. Some hurricane matches and a waterproof container. Those uh, striking pads do get wet and they won't light the match, so make sure you put those inside the container. A lighter, a bright colored whistle that also does not have a ball that will get stuck or frozen inside the whistle and make it inoperable. A small signal mirror, ideally one that floats. Utility cord to tie the whistle and mirror together. Just make sure that it's big enough to carry around your neck just in case you have to use it that way. This happens to be the MSR ultralight utility cord. I like this because it's reflective. And if you choose, bring a waterproof camera. It's a great way to document your trip. Do not use your phone. It will get destroyed. Now the items I just mentioned are things that should go into either a small personal dry bag, a five or 10 liter version that you'll clip onto your belt or a life jacket if you brought that from home, if the life jacket has enough pockets. You wanna leave your whale bag shut and watertight as much as possible. If you bring your own life jacket, it must be Coast Guard approved for paddling. You will not be on whitewater. It must be already buoyant, which means the life jacket does not require any action to make you float. So it's not inflatable and it is not auto inflatable. So if you fall out of the boat or roll the canoe over, the life jacket is automatically buoyant. Ideally, it would have plenty of zippered pockets to hold your stuff. If you have any questions, ask Northern Tier. An item that I highly valued and highly recommend was this small pin-on ball compass that I just pinned onto my life jacket, just so I could look down and see which way north was. These next items are all the things that you need to fit inside your 35 liter dry bag, which will go inside the whale bag. This is a 35 liter dry bag. It's a dry bag, meaning that this bag can be completely submerged underwater and held there, and it will not allow any water inside. It must have a roll top closure to be a dry bag, and I will caution you that not all waterproof stuff sacks with roll top closures are actual dry bags. So be careful and try it at home before taking it on your trip. 
And your 35 liter dry bag should hold everything but your rain gear, your camp shoes, and a camp chair should you bring one. Your sleeping bag should keep you comfortable at 40 degrees. Your sleeping bag does not have to be synthetic. Your sleeping bag can be down provided that your down sleeping bag is inside of a waterproof dry bag which is itself inside of another waterproof dry bag like your 35 liter dry bag that you put all your stuff in. This is to make sure your down sleeping bag cannot get wet no matter what happens. Your sleeping bag needs to be very small when it's inside its stuff sack because you need your sleeping bag to fit inside your 35 liter dry bag. If you need to make your sleeping bag smaller so that it will fit inside your 35 liter dry bag, you can use a waterproof stuff sack that is also a compression dry bag like this Sea to Summit compression dry bag. I would highly encourage you to bring a sleeping pad that will fit inside of your 35 liter dry bag. Otherwise, your sleeping pad will take up valuable room inside your whale bag. As an example, this is the stuffed size of a Thermarest Neo Air sleeping pad. This will easily fit inside your 35 liter dry bag. Remember, if you bring an inflatable air mattress to also bring your field repair kit, this is uh, an inflatable pillow. I highly recommend that you bring one. This happens to be a Sea to Summit Eros Ultralight. It's very comfortable and small when compressed. And for you adults, I highly recommend that you bring some soft foam earplugs to help you get a good night's sleep. You'll need a warm synthetic insulated jacket. It does need to be synthetic. I would not recommend you bring a downed insulated jacket. This happens to be the Patagonia Nano Puff. You will also need a fleece beanie hat to put on your head to help keep you warm. You don't have to bring an extra set of pants. If you do, I'd recommend that you bring a pair of pants with zip off legs so you can wear them as shorts or pants. So you can wear them as shorts in camps and as pants should you need a backup in case you're on the water pants becomes destroyed. Now you could wear your rain pants as extra pants but I don't think you want to wear those as a backup for your on the water pants. I would recommend that you bring a t-shirt to wear in camp. I brought an extra long sleeve shirt thinking that I would need it for bug protection. And I ended up wishing that I had a short sleeve shirt because some afternoons got hot. If you bring a short sleeved shirt to wear in camp and the bugs get bad, just put on your rain jacket. You will want a pair of shorts to sleep in or just wear around camp. Uh, these happen to be the Patagonia baggies in the seven inch version. Before you leave for your trip, spray all of your clothes with insect repellent. The clothes you do not want to spray with insect repellent are your underwear and your socks. You'll want to bring an extra pair of cushion socks to wear in camp and you want these to be the exact same socks that you wear on the water as a backup. You'll want to bring an extra pair of underwear, the same exact pair that you're wearing on the water. For females, you will want to bring at least one extra pair of underwear to match what you're wearing on the water, plus any underwear that you might need for in camp and sleeping at night. You will need a headlamp, but as long as you have a fresh new set of batteries, you likely won't need spare batteries. I would highly recommend that you bring an extra pair of polarized sunglasses just in case you lose your primary ones, make sure you bring a retention strap for those sunglasses and also put them inside of a hard case because they will be stuffed inside your dry bag, which will be inside the well bag and it might get crushed and broken. If you wear prescription eyeglasses, make sure you bring a spare pair of eyeglasses. Along with those extra eyeglasses, make sure you bring a retention strap that floats and is a bright color. Make sure you put those extra eyeglasses inside of a hard case so they don't get crushed and broken. And make sure you bring a cleaning cloth for your eyeglasses so you don't scratch your lenses. If you wear contacts, you want to make sure you bring some spare contacts for your entire trip in the backcountry. You might also consider bringing a travel sized uh, cleaning solution. If you bring cleaning solution, of course you'll want a storage case. 
I'd also recommend you bring a very small lint-free pack towel that uh, is only used for your contacts just in case you need some place to set things on. Of course, I always like organization, so putting all your contact stuff inside of a Ziploc quart freezer bag is, I think, always a great idea. If you did not put contact rewetting drops in your personal dry bag or life jacket, you definitely want to make sure it's included here with the rest of your contact stuff. If you take prescription medicine, you'll need to take two bottles of prescription medicine, both bottles having the original pharmacy label on them. You'll want to split those two bottles up between yourself and your crew advisor, or at least another person that you can trust, and then also put both of those individual bottles inside of Ziploc bags to make sure they stay waterproof. For eating, you'll want a long-handled spoon or spork, your preference. This happens to be a Tokes Titanium long-handled spoon. You'll need a small bowl, uh, preferably one that uh, folds down flat so that it stores easily inside your 35-liter dry bag and that you can lick it clean to help with dishes. This happens to be the Fossils Snap Fold Bowl. You will want to put your bowl and spoon inside of a gallon freezer bag to keep the inside of your dry bag clean in case there's any food residue on your bowl or your spoon. And tie a little piece of microcord around your bowl and spoon and the eyelet so that you can use it with a carabiner to hang it from a clothesline to dry. I highly recommend that you bring a spare one quart water bottle uh, that folds down inside of your 35 liter dry bag just in case you lose your primary water bottle. It has happened. This is an example of a platypus soft water bottle. If you'd like any drink mix, uh, make sure you bring that. It's not provided. And make sure you put all that in its own Ziploc snack size bag. If you like to drink coffee, you will want to bring a coffee mug that's lightweight and small. Northern Tier will provide a percolator and Folgers coffee, but just make sure you ask for it. If you do not want that, then bring your own instant coffee and boil water using a pot and the stove. If you like any personal sweeteners or powdered creamer with your coffee, make sure you pack that as well and also put that inside of a Ziploc snack size baggie. For dental hygiene, you're going to want a travel sized toothbrush and a travel size tube of your favorite toothpaste. You'll need to put your toothbrush and toothpaste inside of a snack size Ziploc bag in case it leaks. And you'll want dental floss or a flosser to clean out your mouth. Uh, I prefer a flosser just to keep my fingers out of my mouth and a little extra hygiene. All right, now pay close attention. We're gonna build a high adventure hygiene kit that will allow you to decently clean yourself in the bank country with minimal fuss so that you can stay healthy. For each day in the back country, you will need one quart Ziploc bag. Inside that Ziploc bag, you will place one nitrile medical glove. You will need two wipes for each day, three for females. The wipes need to be packed inside of a travel size container. If your wipes dehydrate, just add purified water and wait a while. The first wipe is to clean your face first, then your armpits, then the inside of your elbows, and then the last, the back side of your knees. The second wipe and medical glove is to wipe your bottom. If you're a female, use the third wipe to clean your personal areas. Put all of your wipes and your glove back inside the Ziploc bag and then place that in the trash. Clean your hands afterwards with your hand sanitizer. Use your light load towel and some water for the rest of your body if you need to clean that. And then lastly, clean your feet. Rinse out your towel and let it dry. Also bring two one gallon freezer bags one marked wash and one marked rinse in case you needed to wash your clothes in the backcountry. Your crew will have soap. Females will also want to bring hair ties and a hairbrush to help maintain your hair. Also for females, make sure to ask your female advisor what the appropriate type of Fenneman hygiene product you need for your activities. Make sure to pack these items in a gallon freezer bag to keep them waterproof. 
and bring along one Ziploc baggie for each day that you'll be in the backcountry for trash. If you bring an electronic device like a camera, make sure you also bring a power bank to charge that device. A word of advice, solar chargers do not work and you won't have enough time to use it anyways. Make sure you also bring the associated cables and I highly recommend those cables be of a bright color so they don't get lost when they're placed on the ground. These next items are items that will go directly inside the whale bag. You might want to consider bringing a dedicated camp chair that sits up off the ground. I took a Crazy Creek chair to double as a canoe seat and a camp chair and I got tired of sitting on the ground. Uh, the next time I go, I'm going to take a dedicated seat cushion for the canoe and a dedicated camp chair. If you do take a camp chair, make sure it's small so it doesn't take up much room inside the whale bag and that it's also lightweight so that it does not add a lot of weight to the whale bag. Camp shoes. Now, your camp shoes may have to double as your primary on the water boots in case those boots fail. So a couple of requirements to, you need lace-up shoes, they actually have to be shoes, and they need some tread on them. So trail running shoes are great. Also make sure these are not waterproof as well, just like your on the water boots. These next items will go on the top of the whale bag so that you can access them once you're on the water, in the canoe, or at a portage site. Your rain jacket needs to be waterproof and breathable and have a hood and actually be a jacket and not a pullover. Your rain pants need to be waterproof and breathable also and be able to put them on and off without taking off your boots or shoes. Absolutely no ponchos. If you roll the canoe over in a poncho, you'll become enveloped in it and there's a good chance that you might drown. And I want you to remember your rain gear offers great protection from bugs, especially mosquitoes and biting flies. That was everything that you need to take into the backcountry. So now let's talk about the things that you need to take for your travel to and from Northern Tier. Now look for another video on actually how to pack to travel to Northern Tier. So I won't go into that in this video. You'll need your field uniform shirt. You'll want a t-shirt to wear underneath your field uniform shirt. You will need your field uniform pants and don't forget to bring a belt for those. You'll need one to two changes of underwear. You'll need one to two pair of socks. Maybe you want short socks and long socks, your preference. And you'll need some shoes that are comfortable to travel in. You should also uh, consider bringing a pair of sunglasses for your travel. And you may want a hat to wear as well. You'll need a photo ID, preferably a government issued ID if that's available. If your adventure takes you into Canada, you will need a passport. You will need some cash and small bills. You'll also need a credit card, like a green light card. And don't forget your airplane, train, or bus tickets and any reservation info for a hotel or a rental car. And you'll need to put all of your IDs, passport, in a Ziploc baggie for the backcountry so that you can keep it all together so it won't get lost and it will stay waterproof. In the backcountry, all these items will go inside your 35 liter dry bag. You will need a large duffel bag. You'll need the room for the return trip from Northern Tier, not for the trip to Northern Tier. Because you'll pack differently traveling to Northern Tier versus traveling home from Northern Tier. This is the REI Big Haul 120 liter duffel bag. It's large enough to fit your life jacket, should you take your own, plus all of your other stuff. Make sure you pack your knife inside your duffel bag for travel to and from Northern Tier because your duffel bag will be a checked bag. One of the other features that your duffel bag should have are shoulder straps which make carrying the duffel bag through an airport easier. Inside your duffel bag you're going to want to pack two maybe three 30 gallon heavy duty trash bags for wet items that you'll be packing in your duffel bag when you return home. 
You'll need your day pack to use as a carry-on bag. Make sure you've taken out any knives or matches, things of that sort that won't pass through airport security. A pair of shorts to just wear around and sleep in. You may also want a swimsuit. You will need a pair of shower shoes or sandals that you can wear in the shower. If you wear prescription glasses, of course, make sure you bring those for your travel. To put your prescription eyeglasses in, you want a hard-sided case to keep their glasses from getting broken. Don't forget your cleaning cloth for your eyeglasses. If you wear contacts, don't forget to bring spare contacts. If you need cleaning solution for your contacts, don't forget to bring a travel-sized portion of that and a hard case to put your contacts in. You might also consider bringing a very small, clean cloth in case you need it when you're putting in or taking out your contacts. You also might likely want easy access to lens rewetting drops. Make sure any prescription medicine that you are traveling with stays on your person. It is in an original bottle from the pharmacy that has your name on it and the name of the medicine. Make sure that you have enough to make it through the entire trip plus a couple of more days just in case something happens. For your personal hygiene while on the road, you'll need a toiletry kit. And inside that kit, you will need soap. You can use liquid soap or bar soap. If you choose bar soap, put it inside of a container. A travel-sized portion of shampoo and hair conditioner. Don't forget your hairbrush and hair ties if you're a female. And don't forget deodorant. Make sure it's travel-sized. You'll also need shaving cream and a razor. I would not recommend that you rely on an electric razor. Electric razors don't work as well if you've not been able to shave for days, and the battery may not be charged when you need it. You'll need a travel-sized toothbrush and your favorite toothpaste, and also don't forget dental floss or a flosser to help keep your teeth clean. I'd also recommend that you bring a pair of nail clippers. Make sure they're compatible with air travel and a nail file or emery board. For females, make sure that you bring in any feminine hygiene products that you need. You'll also need a large pack towel that will fit inside your duffel bag or your carry-on bag. You'll need this for the Northern Tier Shower House. I'd also recommend that you bring earplugs, uh, for adults especially, and then also don't forget that you'll be sleeping in a cabin or a yurt with all the kids and adults together, so the kids may also want to bring earplugs. If you're taking one, don't forget your mobile phone. You'll also need a wall and car charger, and of course all the associated USB cables to go along with that. And don't forget earbuds. All right, so that's everything that you need to bring for your personal self in the backcountry. I want to remind you to pay very, very close attention to how everything is used and especially how it's packed for the backcountry. The scout motto is to be prepared. One of my reasons for making this video is so that you will be more prepared for your trip than I was for mine. Have an awesome trip. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you'd like to support this channel, remember, please subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends about it. Thanks for hitting that like button. Everything here is free. I want to give back to the community. I want to give to you everything here for free. I've been out in the outdoors for a long, long time, and it's great that I can be able to give this all this information to you. That is what's most important to me. If you would like to give back, I do have a GoFundMe page set up, and you can follow uh, the link. And if you'd like to, if you're a youth with your parents' support, I would gladly accept your donations. Thank you, and have a blessed day.